Hello, I am Nathan Bailey with 3CX, and in this VoIP Nugget we will be performing a security audit on 3CX Phone System. 3CX Phone System has added advanced anti-hacking options to help you secure your PBX from being attacked and used for malicious purposes. To take it even further, 3CX has added extra security measures to extension details and office hours to further protect your 3CX Phone System. As you start to create extensions for your deployment of 3CX Phone System, we have added new options to help secure your extensions from being hacked. First, you should choose strong passwords. Using the extension number or dictionary words is a quick way for a hacker to compromise your system, even with the anti-hacking module in place. A good strong password includes both alphanumeric characters, numbers, and symbols at a good length of six plus characters will make it extremely difficult for an attacker to discover this information. As you can see in the example here, this is a quick way to allow your 3CX phone system to be compromised, and even worse, your system can be used to make malicious phone calls, creating a large phone bill. However, this rule also should be considered for any device that needs a password and authentication ID. For example, creating a bridge with 10,000 and 10,000 as the authentication ID and password is a quick way to let attackers compromise your system. As you can see in the option that is crossed out with a red line, the authentication ID and password are equal to 100, which is our extension. This is a very simple authentication ID and password. You can see in this example the password is in red lettering. This is an added feature for administrators so they can tell at a glance that an extension has a weak authentication ID or password or PIN number. One thing that is often overlooked is proper workstation and server updates. Having a server that is not up to date can leave it vulnerable to an attack. Not to mention workstations that are not up to date can allow attackers onto your network and in turn allow them to access your phone system. Making sure your network is up to date with firmware and Windows updates can protect your network and your phone system from any potential vulnerabilities. If you navigate to the extension node of an extension you want to secure in 3CX Phone System and navigate to the Other tab, you will see this screen. The options we are talking about are highlighted in red. The first is SIP ID. This field is used in conjunction with Direct SIP and most users will not need to enter anything here. But if you are using Direct SIP, it is recommended to not enter a valid extension number in this field, but something like NB1 or NB100, in my case, as my name is Nate Bailey. Secondly, disable external calls is added to disallow users to make external calls, and the final two options here are disallow use of the extension outside the LAN. This will not allow this extension to register on an IP address that is not on the local LAN of the 3CX phone system, and this is on by default. Finally, we have the option to block remote tunnel connections. This will stop users connecting to the PBX over the tunnel from their soft phone or SIP proxy manager. This can be good to stop employees who have laptops from making calls on the work phone system from home or rogue phones from connecting over the tunnel. Another form of security can be added in outbound rules. By selecting which extension groups can use certain outbound rules will make it more difficult for a hacker to guess your outbound rule settings and make outbound calls. As you can see in this example, I have set up an outbound rule with 0324, and this will make it more difficult for an attacker to guess your outbound rules if they get in. Just leaving 0 or 1 to access an outbound line is just not enough. Setting up email notifications can be useful, but for the security aspect, it gives peace of mind outside office hours and weekends. Some of the options you can be notified for include if someone dials an emergency number, registration status of an extension changes, NIP has been blacklisted, or requests are rejected or blocked by the anti-hacking module because of a security breach, including others. You can also set up multiple email accounts to be notified when the event occurs. You can also tell 3CX Phone System to disable outbound calls outside office hours. What this does is tells the PBX that if your office hours are 9 a.m. until 6 p.m., then between 6.01 p.m. and 8.59 a.m., all trunks and outbound ports will be disabled. If a hacker gets a hold of an extension, the most he will be able to do is make internal calls. Also, in these options you can see that show extensions which have weak passwords have been enabled. This is by default, and we discussed this earlier in this video. If you are not using direct SIP, you can disable calls to external SIP URIs. From the Management Console, go to the Advanced tab, 
and then the advanced section. If a hacker gets into your system and tries to call, for example, 404 at public IP without authentication, this will only reach internal destinations. This option is off by default, but if you wish to learn more about DirectSIP, you can follow the link on the screen for a detailed description about DirectSIP. One part of security that is often overlooked is proper phone configuration. Leaving the phone with a default password which is easily found on the internet can allow attackers to breach your network and access your phones and compromise your phone system. Using a strong password for the web interface can hinder attackers. Also, making sure your devices have the latest supported firmware directly from the manufacturer is very important. Third-party sites can have malicious firmware for download, and this can potentially allow attackers a backdoor into your system. It is very important to keep track of the firmware version you have installed on your devices, and, as you can see from this shot of the management console, each device has listed next to it the current firmware installed. You can easily upgrade the firmware from supported devices directly from the management console. This will help administrators keep track of the firmware they are pushing out to devices on the LAN. Now we will be discussing the anti-hacking module and what it does. First, we have the failed authentication request option. What this does is after a set amount of failed authentication requests, the PBX will blacklist the IP address sending the requests. 25 is the recommended setting and should not need to be changed. If you set this too low, it can cause issues. And if you set this too high, you can give a hacker too much time to send authentication requests before he is stopped. Next, we have the failed challenge requests. 1000 is a sufficient setting. This is for when an attacker is probing your PBX with register requests to see which ones respond. When an extension responds to a challenge, then he knows that it is password protected. This is a spam attack that starts from an extension and sends a register, but will not reply to 407 authentication required. And after a thousand requests, the IP will be blacklisted. Next, we have the blacklist duration interval. 1800 seconds or 30 minutes is default. If a device gets blacklisted, it will stay blacklisted for the set duration of time. Next, we have the security barrier green. 200 milliseconds is acceptable. You can change this, but setting this to a high number will disable it. This is the actual time in milliseconds where the PBX will not enforce action, but will start counting. Basically, during the 200 milliseconds, the PBX will treat everything as valid, so it will know whether abuse started or not on whether the second AMBER threshold is reached. The next security barrier is Security Barrier AMBER. This is the second protection layer, and this is set to 2000 by default. What this does is if the PBX receives more than 2000 packets per second, it will block you lawfully by telling the device to retry in 5 seconds. Next and finally, we have Security Barrier Red. Set this to the default 4000. When this is reached, the PBX will block the device for the time set in the blacklist duration in seconds. If you have a device sending 4000 plus packets per second, this is clearly abuse. As you can see here, these IP addresses have been blacklisted and I have customized the length of the blacklist. You can blacklist single IP addresses or a range of IP addresses. Another overlooked security measure is changing the local SIP port. This will not stop an attacker, but it will slow him down to the point you should be able to detect what is going on. Most attackers are aware that most users leave the local SIP port as 5060 and usually start there when they scan ports. Using an unusual port for your local SIP port will mean that it will take a potential attacker that much longer to find out what port you are using. This information will help you secure your 3CX phone system and extensions. Do remember, this is only the first part of a secure 3CX phone system and network security for your network should be looked at as a first step. A firewall with an intrusion detection system or other alarm mechanism should be used. More information regarding router configuration and security can be found at the link provided. This has been Nathan Bailey from 3CX. I hope this information was informative and more training material can be found at the link provided.